out of work. Gentlemen. Well, gentlemen, I've just been looking over the latest placement returns, and it does seem to me that the result is very encouraging. Uh, it has developed into one of the most important branches of the department. I think we should uh, consider the advisability or otherwise of making it a permanent uh, department because it seems that the, the necessity for the department will be there whether there is an unemployment problem or not. Now, in addition to finding avenues of employment for those who are unfortunately unemployed, uh, the investigations that take place in regard to the suitability of the applicants for the work that is offering is very necessary and desirable because uh, in that way, we avoid the mistakes of the past where they've been endeavoring to place square pegs into round holes. Uh, we have the peculiar problem of guiding uh, skilled labor back into its proper channels. Then also, there is the problem of uh, the disabled men. As you know, the uh, employer has the right of selection, and if he does not exercise that right, then selection is solely by uh, occupational fitness. In my opinion, the increasing success of the placement service is due to recognition by the employers of our efficient but flexible methods, uh, recognition also of the fact that they have the choice of from 35,000 commercial, industrial, and rural workers in any part of the Dominion, and, well, in short, in, due to the recognition by the employers, the placement scheme, instead of being still an experiment, is now an actual business necessity. I would like to make this final appeal to the public. Uh, if the placement department is to be the success, success that we hope uh, that it will be, uh, then the spirit of cooperation must prevail. We want the cooperation of the employers of labor. We want the cooperation of the workers in industry and of the unemployed and of the public generally because a great deal depends upon, as I said previously, that spirit of cooperation. Let's see how the working world starts its day. In the Navy, ceremonial plays its part. The brave ship's quarterdeck and the white ensign slowly hoisted with a royal salute. field there is peace, golden fields of waving corn, one of the glories of our native land, with sun sharks making play while contented men and women labor from dawn to dusk that we may have bread. Sturdy bushmen with axe and saw, pair forth to fell the forest giants. Tall trees bow their heads, fall to earth to serve men in the creation of their homes.
work amid such grandeur as this cannot but have an uplifting effect on the sturdy yeomen who have helped to mould the character of New Zealand. And in the city itself, everyone is bustling and hurrying to shop, factory or office, all happy in the knowledge that they have a job. But alas, all these signs of activity but point the contrast with the unemployed and their suffering families. Now watch the dignity of labour again. Wellington's railway station. Fashioned by New Zealand workers. A mighty achievement. A masterpiece of construction. Down on the waterfront too, work is being given out. There are not nearly enough jobs to go round. I don't think there's anything going to be done today, do you? It doesn't no. look so good. It's so many minutes. Uh, it doesn't look as if there's a chance of a show today. I don't think that old man has so many stages at all down here. Uh -oh. There's a chance anyway. Have you been to the Arbor Ball? I've been everywhere. <coughs> Farther along the wharves, all is bustle and activity. Mighty ships from distant ports load and unload strange cargoes. There is work for some, but how many can find regular employment in this capacity? Our friend makes another effort. In a busy factory, great machines operated by men, women and youths fashion milady's stockings. Nimble fingers work rhythmically and from a silken thread is fashioned a gossamer texture of sheer loveliness. Alas, there is no place here for an unskilled man, but still he does not give up hope. He enters upon a strange symphony of sound coupled with brain and brawn that hold one spellbound as one wanders through this vast work. Here, hundreds of New Zealanders find employment. Second to none in their versatility and quickness at learning, these men work expertly. Seems as if a wand had only to be waved and trusted. Graceful motor cars shape themselves as at a magician's touch. Road travel is a pleasure in these times, in direct contrast to grandfather's coaching days. Yet still our friend is unsuccessful, despite this seeming abundance of work. Disheartened but game, he pursues the golden fleece of employment. Say, is there any chance of a job, mister? Sorry, mate, there's nothing doing. Uh, There are other jobs on the walls besides cargo work, and he visits the waterfront again, thinking he may be lucky enough to secure even a casual opportunity. in yet another motor assembly plant is he fortunate. Engineers are busy grinding bearings correct to a thousandth part of an inch. Bodies are built up apart from the chassis. Other engineers adjust with skill and care the delicate mechanism that develops such terrific power and see that all is safely trued and secured. Then bodies are slung onto the framework by traveling cranes. Comfort is supplied by upholsterers until the completed car is a thing of beauty, even if it does not last forever. Lunch time, knock off men. Our friend, faint yet pursuing, unwraps in lonely solitude the lunch prepared by his courageous wife. At the railway workshops, the men are lucky enough on this occasion to be entertained by Sir Harry Lauder, whose jokes aid the digestion and make for good fellowship.
you come home tonight, the way you come home the last harmony night from the Merry Nations, she says, you, you won't get into this house. So I came home early. <laughs> Half past two. Any luck since I saw you last? No, not a blessed thing. Oh, I don't know, I'm sure. I don't know what to do. Seems to me to be an impossible proposition. Sometimes I feel I didn't go home to the white. Well, I'll take a job anywhere. I don't care if it's in the bush or navy. So will I. I'll take on anything too, but there's not a job to be got. Oh, we better get along, eh? Oh, yes, I think we'll have to go home now. The advertisement columns of the newspaper are scanned daily by men only too anxious to obtain work. And these very columns themselves require the skilled labor of many to produce. Great presses churn out their miles of paper covered with news from every quarter of the globe. Great events and small are chronicled. Hundreds of copies are mailed away to out of town subscribers and thousands more are sold by these lads starting out on the field of workaday adventure. Hello there. Any luck? Yes, I got a job from the placement office. <laughs> Five pound a week. A job? Yes, the first work I've done for 12 months. How did you say you got this job? I went down to the placement office and I hadn't been there five minutes when a bloke uh, called the contact officer came out and he said, here's a job for you. Go down and see the boss. And I went down and believe me, I clicked. Well, cheerio, mates. Why don't you go down to the placement office and see them there? Well, I'd better get home and tell the missus the good news. Cheerio. 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 Well, I've heard about this placement office, but somehow or other, I never seem to think it was any use. I'm going to give it a go. What about you, mate? Sure, I'll give it a go. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? Uh, any jobs going at all? What's your trade? Plumber. Plumber. And what are you, sir? I'm a storeman. Storeman. What name? Uh, J. Brown. J. Brown. And you? I'm John Jackson. Please sit down, please. I'll call you directly. Thanks very much. Thank you. Mr. Brown. Mr. Jackson. Thanks very much. Good afternoon, Mr. Jackson. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. How are you? Very well, thanks. Looking for a job? I am. I'm looking for a job, all right. What occupation do you follow? I'm a storeman. Oh, yeah. General storeman? Yes, general storeman. There's a job here for a storeman, I believe. Do you have a job? Yes, there's one here. I'll just make sure about it. Thanks. Mr. Dixon, basement service speaking. In reference to that storeman position. Haven't been through yet, has it? No, all right, thanks. Well, you let me know in the morning? Thank you very much. I'll be all right, Mr. Jackson. I think you'll be all right. Let you right. know tomorrow or the next day. I'll be grateful. Quite all right. Thanks very I'll much. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Ah, bye. Cheerio, Mr. Brown. Call to see me tomorrow morning about 10 o'clock. Yes. I'll do my best. Yes, I will. Goodbye. Most diversified are the inquiries received. For instance, some employer may require an accountant with previous experience of, say, soft goods. It is possible the local placement office may not have such a man on its own books. 
but it certainly will be able to secure a suitable candidate from the lists exchanged weekly between the 24 placement offices throughout the country. No fewer than 560 different occupational headings are included in these lists, and it can thus be realized that few requirements cannot be filled. And now let us see the new hope born of this visit to the placement office when our friend reaches home. I've met some people who have put new life into me. Why, what do you mean? I call it that placement office we've heard about. The way they treat you there gives a man new courage and hope. Why, what did they tell you? Well, they told them not to worry and that they'll do their best to find me work. And I know they're sincere. That's far better to have people like that backing you up than to be wandering aimlessly around and meeting you about time and again. Well, that sounds more encouraging. Yeah. I do hope it brings you something. Jackson's position is now confirmed as permanent, and he is instructed to report on the job. security open like a golden sunrise, rejuvenating a tired heart. Every one of you who followed this story must be profoundly moved by John Jackson's struggle through the valley of despair to the haven of secure work. You all must surely pray that never may anyone near and dear to you suffer as John Jackson and his loved ones suffered. But there are today many John Jacksons who cannot yet say to their wives and children, I've got a job. Some of those dear to you who have followed this story may be among the John Jacksons of tomorrow. We must do all in our power to cure this evil. If you make up your minds to buy New Zealand made goods whenever you can, you will create avenues of employment for thousands of men and boys who today live in idleness and despair. So buy from your own country and bring joy and happiness again into these homes. Let us remember the story of John Jackson and determine each one of us to do his and her part to avoid and cure the misery and the despair that reign in so many homes today through unemployment. Is it not a sounder policy to provide a remedy by buying the goods produced by our own fellow countrymen? <laughs> 